And so it's, it's a beautiful evening. Like I told you in the morning, I said it was a beautiful African morning. Right now, this evening, it's a beautiful African evening. And wherever you are, you can turn to your neighbor and say to your neighbor, neighbor, congratulate Harry Coast, the new African Cup of Nations champion. AFCON 2015 and the elephants of Cote d'Ivoire did Africa proud, did themselves proud, and they are the champions. More, more, and more, and more, and more of that to come. More to come on that one later. Of course, tonight I have with me my super duper friend, the one who counts his ABC in a super duper way. His name is Super Duper ABC Abu Chineke Njoku. But he will be back with me in a bit. Also, I'd like to tell you this. Don't forget, you can follow us on all of our social media platforms. On Facebook, it is www.facebook.com forward slash my R2 TV. On Twitter, it is at R2 underscore TV. And of course, on Instagram, it is at R2 TV. And of course, don't forget that you can follow me too at Darius Harlem on all of these platforms. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It was a derby weekend, you know, and I told you we keep the derby scores. And of course, well, it didn't go down well for some. It went down well for some. Well, all of that and more to come after this time out. Don't forget, this is our 2 TV. And of course, as you know, this is Keeping's course. And we keep all the good scores. We'll be back in a bit. Don't go away. You can now watch our 2 TV online at royalrootstv.com and on your smartphones by downloading the r TV app for Android, Blackberry, and Windows Mobile from the respective app store. Apps for iOS devices coming soon. r TV. Entertainment at its best. Entertainment everywhere. Okay, all right, now it's a beautiful African evening. Of course, the African Cup of Nations final is over. Ivory Coast are the champion, and there's been a whole lot of reaction, a lot, lot of, lot of, lot of, lot and lots of reaction to that one. You know, the elephants of Cote d'Ivoire, the one we would like to call the golden generation, are finally, finally golden. Maybe Didier Drogba made the right choice by not being a part of this team tonight, uh, this edition. Well, I'm not going to be the one talking about that alone. I've got my friend, Super Duper ABC, Abu Chineke Unjoku. How are you doing today? I'm very good. Uh, it's nice to be on uh, Keeping Score this evening, and I'm very happy to have uh, uh, the Ivory Coast be the champion of African nations. But it's a big pain for me to bear because, you know, <laughs> <And> I, <laughs> I support Ghana with uh, everything, but okay. they did not. The brother, man, the brother man can speak a little <laughs> bit of, um, what's that language you speak? Chale, what you say? Uh, talk to the people at home. Chale, uh, I mean, it's, it's a bad game, Shafa, you don't understand. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we've got reactions on that one coming very soon, but quickly, Abu Chineke, let's look at it. Right. Of course, the topless match, Equatorial Guinea lost out in the topless match via penalties, and it's very funny that this year's edition, both of the top place and the finals ended up on penalty shootout. And of course, Ivory Coast, the, the one that this addition by penalties, just like the last time they won in 1992. What's your take on that one? The one problem I have with uh, the finals was because uh, Ghana were just beat a uh, long time in that very game. Uh, they were known for their attacking flair. Mm -hmm. uh, what Castle did was just respecting uh, the Ivorians in the midfield, and they are not doing the what they know how to do best. Gang is not a player that should have played that very final that day. Uh, but the coach has to risk him Avran Grant, and that was a big mistake for him. He would have played uh, Jordan Ayu, and I would have done that the real magic up front, partner with his brother, and also making sure that the, the Ivory Grand defense is being put on track. You know, Kolochore is not a good defender that you can bank on anytime, any day. Uh, I, I like uh, to take it back on that. Kolochore, and that yes. Kolochore is not a good defender or is, is not the best in the best of forms anymore. I can't say he's not in the best of form because even while he was in Arsenal, he wasn't performing at the peak. From your own uh, perspective. From my own. That's, that's the truth about it. Uh, most players are fortunate. Some players are really fortunate and he's, he falls into the bank of those players that are fortunate okay. to be in the, All right, in the right place at the right time. Okay, I'd like to, I'd like to take you up on this one. Abu Chineke Njoku just says, said that um, Kolo Ture is not exceptional, exceptional, exceptional. I'd like to take you up on this one. Do you think that Kolo Ture really was just fortunate to be at the right place at the right time? Don't forget, the hashtag is keeping scores. Now, back to you. You've just challenged the people at home. I'm still, still moving on with uh, my analyst on the game uh, for the final. Um, Ivory Coast were the one that didn't take their chances. We were thinking Boni would have run over, but uh, the big a defender from the Ghanaian side has been a very, very fantastic, stopping him in the air after the ball was being pulled onto his side. Okay, I'd like to ask you this. Don't you think it's a question of both teams trying to be technical in, in, in a lot of areas, trying to be careful, trying to play it safe at the same time, hoping they could go on, on the counter? Because Ghana would have scored. Ghana had, had, had the chances to put, to put the game under, to bury the game, but it would work twice. 
Mm, the problem I have with Ghana is that um, technically the coach didn't set up the right team that he always set up. Avan Grant did the mistake in that very final. Um, you can also bank on the, which of their key players, Wakaso. Basically, I have to mention Wakaso because he's one, of their, Wakaso. Yes, he's one of their active players. Jordan Ayu mm, coming in to be the top striker following his uh, brothers also. Andre Ayu that is playing in the far left. I think Andre should have done that the midfield role for Wakaso. Wakaso done to the far left hand side of the field to play for that very far. I, I, I think the next time Ghana, Ghana puts up an application for, for a new coach, I think my friend here should actually apply. He seems to understand the Ghanaian team even much more than even Grant himself. Look, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Okay, we've got actions and reactions. I would like to take you away from the studio and I would like to take you to the reaction from, first of all, the Ghanaian camp from Asamo Gian, straight on, of course, to Avram Grant and, of course, to some of the Ghanaian fans. They really felt bad. They really felt bad. I mean, the, the last time they won this cup is in 1982, mm -hmm. 10 years before Ivory Coast. Okay. Ivory Coast won it last in 1992. So both of them had, had that desire, that zeal to win. Almost like a two-decade gap uh, between both, uh, both teams and also... No, no, t t ten years. Ten, 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 ten years. years. A decade, uh, it's actually. just a decade, actually, from the both sides. And, and uh, I believe uh, the experience of uh, Harvey Reynard uh, being the only coach that has won, won the African competition twice. <laughs> twice with different countries. Now, and this same time, he, he won it against Ivory Coast. And now he's winning it for Ivory, Ivory Coast. Coast. Yeah. Uh, well, Averina, congratulations. We'd like to say congratulations to you. But quickly, let's take reactions from the Guinean camp. When we come back, we'll talk some more. This, of course, as you know, is Football Africa. My name is still Adelia Salen. God bless you. Take it out. Take it away. We have no excuses now. It's, uh, we went to the penalty shootout, and then we lost today. You know, um, I think they've, went, they, they've gone to the final on two occasions and then they've lost and then this year they, they came back again to win it. You know, they, all, they, they went to penalty shootout, you know, um, for two times and then this is the third time they went to on penalty shootout in the final and then um, they won, you know. So, um, I'm, I'm very, very sad at the moment. Everybody is sad, but I don't regret our performance at all. I think um, we did so well in the competition and then we are hoping um, I think we have, we've got a bright future because we've got young quality players. Even in this game against team that have so many good players, we was the better side. They didn't uh, create even one chance in 120 minutes. And uh, all of this tournament, we scored a lot of goals. We, I think we scored the eyes uh, more than any team. We considered less than any team. We did a lot of good things. And uh, I think even we thought about the future that I think everybody in Ghana can be proud in this team. They show a lot, a lot of good things. We were, we were hoping to change everything and uh, we tried our best and um, it didn't happen, you know. So um, I've got nothing to say. I think um, the Ivorians are happy now and they, they because they've won the cup. and. Um, I don't, I don't have anything to say right now. Um, it's, it's past and gone, you know, we, we cannot repeat it again. We have to just go back and then um, come back strongly. This is repeating itself again. And uh, we don't know what happened. Uh, well, we, we give thanks to God, whatever happened, take it like that. But it's very painful to go, to have this particular opportunity and then to squander it. In fact, it's very, very difficult. Very, very hard. I, I, I'm confused. There's an indication that the, the team can go far. This is a very young team. We've got so many talents among them. We should encourage them and build on and come 2017. Who knows? We're going to leave the cup. Okay, right now, right now, I feel so much for the Guinean, for the Guinean national team. I feel so much for the Black Stars of Ghana. I feel like I should just go to Accra. I should go to Kumasi and just, and just. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to miss what's right now. You could see something there. You could see that throughout the entire length and breadth of the country, throughout the team, there is first of all a belief in the team, and then of course there's also that 
um, communal sympathy and understanding. What's your take on that? Um, every, everybody that loses will find a way to you know, give himself some courage, and that's what the Ghanaians are doing for themselves. I believe Asamoah should have you know, become brave enough to uh, put that behind him, uh, the past mistakes he has done, and step up to the plate, being the, the leader of the team, and going out after the 120 minutes in the, the, the few minutes uh, to be substituted doesn't really go well. He should have done it. He should have gone and take the penalty. And I believe that would have put the, the pressure on to the other team if they understand how he can do it. Do you, you understand when uh, Kolo Toure was about to take his penalty, Ghanaian's players already knew that he's going to lose the penalty. You know, record back to the Zambias, uh, the finals that was messed, uh, missed up by the uh, Cote d'Ivoire team. It was Kolo Toure that, that made the penalty. I'd like, like, I, I like to ask you something. How much do you think psychology played in the game if we look at what the Ivorian keeper did? Uh, there is no psychology. I believe that was um, a risk. And then the, the risk. No, I'm not talking about his taking the penalty. I'm talking about his um, his physical health. That's what I'm saying. His health is not on, on point. You you actually saw the massaging that was done while he was uh, uh, they were in break. Okay, if yeah. we, if, we, if we agree that his health was not on point, do you think that actually had effect on the Ghanaian players because they were really furious? That could also cause some imbalance. You, you, um, okay, let's just tell you that Africans we don't really have this. Too much sympathy when it comes to uh, seeing your opponent that you know fully about that. It if you, it, maybe if it wasn't, you miss out, maybe it wasn't sympathy. It, maybe it was frustration. Maybe they were angry. They wanted, they wanted to get it over with. Mm, I, I think that that was also among the the, the, the thing among uh, the players. Everyone was anxious to take the penalty, and the coach also made some mistakes. I mean, Avan Grant selecting the boys that are not supposedly be taking the penalty that very moment. You know, some fresh leg that was put in uh, actually took them some penalties, and they lost on that penalty. Okay, just going back a little bit to talk about Ivory um, Côte d'Ivoire. I would say Côte d'Ivoire is a good one for them, uh, but they have to build on uh, with the new boy called uh, Rifreboni up front. TNA is also a good young lad that has been brought into the team, and you can also see that their, uh, co their, their goalkeeper is also saying that this is a, a build, a step forward for the coach. Also, Averena coming into the Ivorian team, and Kola Ture with Yaya Ture. The two brothers partnering well and making sure that the team have the, the yep. courage to get their trophy. Okay, all right. Now, we would like to take you to something very special. The Ivorians, of course, we had Kolotouris speaking, we had Everenert speaking, and we'd like to take you back to that video. It's something I'd like to say congratulations, of course. I've said it over and over again, and there's no end to saying it. To the new champions of Africa, that's the elephants of Cote d'Ivoire. We'll take you to this reaction, and when we come back, we'll talk some more. Because this is our two TV skipping course. And I'm here tonight with Super Duper ABC. And my name is Adelie Salem. Take it away. We'll be back after this time out. Even winning with your club has something magical in it. But winning for your country is something exceptional. We have worked for a long time to win this trophy. I think today is a big buffet. We have worked for a long time to win this trophy. I think that today it is like we've had a big breath of fresh air. We're going to celebrate with our families, with people close to us. I think that today we should also congratulate our leader, Ev Renard, who did amazing work. This wasn't as simple as we were saying. Along the way, we've had our share of criticism, sometimes quite aggressive. And you see, he knew how to put us on the right road so that every one of us leaves his own stardom at home and in our rooms and start working for the team when we come out. Today we felt like an exceptional group. We were very happy and we will go celebrate. The amiable gentleman, the one I like to call Kolo Ture, the one I like to call the big elephant, saying that, of course, they are going to celebrate. Ah, let's swap places. Let's imagine that you're an Ivorian right now. What would you, what would be going on through your mind? Passing all through. You're passing all through. Passing through. Um, the match ended late night. Uh, I think they will be extending their party today uh, for Ivorians. <laughs> they will be expecting the big boys to come back. Finally, the golden generation providing what they want. Uh, that is winning the African Cup of Nations. Uh, it's been a long time coming. But the problem I have with the African Cup of Nations is that uh, CAF is not paying good money. 
<laughs> now, my, now my friend is, so, is speaking like a businessman. He's saying calf is not paying good money. When you say calf is not paying good money, are mm -hmm. you saying that calf is not paying good money because there's no good sponsorship? Or are you saying that calf is not paying good money because calf is not paying good money in spite of the fact that they made? You understand what I said? I calf is not paying good money because there's no good sponsorship. Or calf is not paying good money because calf is not paying good money because they don't you, want to pay good money. You can be organizing an event in Africa, the biggest event in Africa, I mean African football. You know, basically, Africans will love football. If not for the South Africans that love uh, the rugby or, and also the cricket, cricket. Uh, you, are say, you, you will definitely not argue the fact that football is the biggest in sports, in sports in Africa. So if Cap say they're not having sponsor, I think they're very, very, uh, they're not saying the truth, right? 1.5 million naira, 1 million naira for the uh, second place. I mean, the runner up for Ghana, 1.5 for Ivory Coast. It's shaking change. Compared to what these guys put in the stake, I mean, what they put at stake. You know, they are, play, they are professional okay, players. Okay, this is this is not the time to talk <laughs> about calf and its remuneration because right now, all over the world, right now, from FIFA to calf, there's been talks and talks and talks about about corruption, about this, about that. But it is not on the table tonight to discuss. We will look at that some other time. Let's see how the FIFA election plays out. Let's see how calf election plays out. A friend of mine on Twitter recently asked asked this question: that how come? Isaiah Tau is still Cavs president, this, in spite of the fact that he has to go for, for dialysis twice in a week. Ah, politics. Well, we're not simple. going to talk about that. This is it's not just, the show. It's just politics. This is not the show to talk about. Uh, to the, talk the about simple answer is politics. Calf football, calf politics right now. It's a beautiful evening. We'd like to go on a short break. When we come back, we'd like to go into the international derby. Of course, you all know that Arsenal played Tottenham over the weekend, and of course, Arsenal lost. And, um, Real Madrid also played Atletico Madrid and um, Real Madrid also lost. And then Liverpool and Everton played it all. You know, it was squared between Liverpool and Everton. When we come back, it's still keeping scores. And we'll keep the scores on those ones. I told you, we'll keep the debit scores. We'll be back in a short while. Don't go away. Okay, all right, Super Duper ABC. Super Duper ABC. Super ABC. I like to put the Duper, you know. Duper, Duper ABC. <laughs> ABC. Super Duper, Duper ABC. ABC. Okay, you got it all wrong on Friday, actually. You got it all wrong. You tipped Real Madrid that Real Madrid will surely, surely find their way through against Atletico Madrid. No. I'll, tell, I'll tell you their thoughts. It started with the goalkeeping. Um, Casillas has not been on point so far for the team, and he let the boys down. Was it that really Casillas? It was Iki Cassier's fault. Uh, the why goalkeeper is, it, why, is the why, why, final man that why is it, why is it that, why is it that when things go minutes. wrong? Why is it that when things go wrong, we bl blame the last man of the there, There's definitely some people that go, that has to the do real, some the real, things. The real, the, real, the, real, the real deal in football is that the goalkeeper is as good as his defence line. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for Real Madrid, they didn't turn up when you look at the from the midfield. They had a problem right from the midfield. I mean, for, for them not to be able to have about one shot or two, they had very few shots at goal, almost no shots at goal by my own ranking, mm -hmm. for a Real Madrid team that we know and we love. And then, from there on, from there on, they, 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 the, the midfield fought, fell, fell now, they fluttered, they fell to, Real, to Atletico Madrid's onslaught. So there was no ball to connect with, the, there was no ball for the strikers to play with. And also the defense wasn't at home because the midfield collapsed. So what, what's Cashier's fault in this one? I mean the first goal. It started with the first goal. Okay. That the first goal was a slip of error. Their second goal was fantastic, was well dealt with. The defenders were cut back, and the finish was perfect. So I think it started with the first goal. You, you, you understand football is dynamic. It flows. When you don't get the rhythm on, from the onset, it's definitely a time for you to, uh, you know, you'll be cutting back on your mistakes, and you're cutting back on your mistake. And if you don't cut the mistake shots, uh, the mm. opponent will definitely punish you for that, and that is what happened against uh, Real Madrid on that very derby. So, so let's let's look at Real Madrid's chances now. The tables, uh, it's it's a very funny situation right now. Real Madrid, they've got they've got, they're just one point. They've got 54 points. They're on 54 points from 22 matches. Mm -hmm. They're just one point ahead of Barcelona, and then they're two points ahead of Atletico Madrid. Now let's look at this. Ten matches from now, where do you see Real Madrid? Madrid are going to be going far. Uh, I believe Madrid have a, a good team to to a good team to move with. 
as their boys will be recuperating. The, the team will also want to have a good fight back after you know being demolished by their neighbors, Atletico Madrid. Well, I do you have to goals. use the word demolish? It, four <laughs> goals is, is too big I mean, for the Galacticals. I mean, I mean, they got one, they considered one, they considered two, they considered three, and they considered four. And it, of course, what will you say about Griezmann's form? Um, Griezmann is very, very fantastic. He's a player that pushes the ball up front. And one of the things that he's been working for this Atletico Madrid is that they are very ag aggressive and they are compact in the midfield. You understand when the ball was, the, the, during the second half, when the dynamics of the game started changing, where Atletico, the Real Madrid ha continued to have the balls, it was fouls that the Atletico Madrid uses to cut back the attack from the Madrid team and they were booked on that. So that's, for me, it's not a good way to play football. Sometimes they, but then it's working for them. Uh, sometimes they take it overboard. They take it overboard and they get But it didn't work for booked. them in the Champions League finals. It didn't work for them for the Champions League final. Even against uh, Barcelona, there were very there were so many boxing booking for the Atletico Madrid team. So they had to come and back they even, playing. They were even given a red card. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. And, and that was it for them. Okay. Let's let's now come back to the English Premier League. Arsenal. Arsenal fell to Tottenham. I told I told my co panelists that very day. I told, him, I told my co-panelists the other day that. Uh, okay, BJ Esquire, <laughs> Bolagia, Bolore, if you're saying this right now, um, uh, Super Duper ABC just called you out. He's saying, okay, you told him about Atletico, so you, you had one, so shots have been fired right now. You fired one at him, now he's firing one back at you. He's, he's keeping scores with you on that one, so it's 1-1 one, one right now. It's 1-1, one, 1-1. One, 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 one. Okay, and the so. problem is with uh, the, uh, the Arsenal's team is that the finally found their rhythm in Alexis Sanchez. He's a key player these days. No, but, but, but they, they played well without Sanchez until they stopped, they, they stopped playing. I think, uh, how would you, they scored first, and then they refused to Messi turn up. Messi Yes, they refused to turn up. And this guy picked up the ball. The, uh, Harry Kane. Harry Kane. <laughs> Harry Kane. Harry Kane. And the, one very dramatic thing about, about Arsenal's game, about Arsenal Tottenham's game, is the fact that right now, a lot of pictures are surfacing on the internet of Harry Kane's younger days as a, as a footballer, as a footballer, and his countless pictures have come up on the internet with Harry Kane in Arsenal's jersey. As Harry Kane actually is, a, is an Arsenal reject, so to speak. But right now, mm -hmm. he's the one that's doing the damage. Is it time Arsenal find a way? Arsenal find a way to actually, you know, everyone they've rejected seems to come back to earn them from from the days of um, Aladier, Aladier to 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 even. Ashley Cole and all of them. Exactly. And all of that. So what do you think that Wenger needs to do right now? The season is almost beyond their grabs. They, 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 they just have 42 points. They are right now sixth on the log. Do you think they stand a Champions League chance this season? Uh, they still stand a Champions League chance. Uh, you know, oh. um, Southampton is not a team to bank on. And you understand that they can just drop three points in a row. Arsenal's form is just uh, one out of six matches. They've won five matches on the bounce. And this is just only their form, and that is why the coach is not taking it too personal. Well, it's but, but what he's taking personal is that they, they lost three points, and that is something that they didn't want to Well, lose. he's actually saying that real, um, Tottenham should not you know, get overboard, feel that, yes, because this is one victory in one of the few. Okay, quickly, well, that we can't really do dwell into that much, much more like I love, love us to dwell into. But right now, they, they've got a chance, Arsenal have a chance to redeem themselves. They've got Leicester. Tomorrow, they're playing Leicester tomorrow, while um, All City will be facing Austin Villa, and of course, Sutherland will be facing Cube, Queen's Park Rangers, and Liverpool will be facing Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspurs. Now, look at those two fixtures. Mm -hmm. First of all, Arsenal could get a three point if they do win tomorrow. At the Emirates. At the Emirates, then they probably would leapfrog. Um, they could, they can, if they win tomorrow, they have and, a two point gap. Gap. That's Ahead if, of Tottenham. If, if Tottenham. Loses, yeah, loses or against Liverpool. Or loses or probably if they lose or they draw. But that's not leap from them. So I think it's going to be a deep dunk affair between these two teams. Uh, the thing about it is that every team has 90 minutes to play. It's all about 90 minutes. If you take your 90 minutes well, you get the three points. If you don't play well, you lose your three points. And that is something that is on the cyclic mind of every coach. They want to get their team right and they want to get some winning. Um, for Ericsson, he's playing on points for the Tottenham team. And for the uh, Liverpool man, Cotillo, he's currently with few injuries and they have to go for final checks up before he will be satisfied to play on well, well, that derby game against uh, Tottenham. Let, let, let's see what happens right now. There's a rumour online that I am, Liverpool will probably be making a bid for Jack Wilshere. we we'll would like to see how that turns out because one of the things I'm backing on is the fact that Jack's um, recent discipline in discipline as, um, is giving Wenger a cause for concern and already Jack is, seems to be falling out 
of favor in the Arsenal lineup. First of all, he's injury prone and also because of his discipline problem. Well, we'd like to see how that turns out. That is one of the many rumors right now. I like to call them rumors because it's not authentic until the deal is done. Well, that's how much we can take tonight on keeping scores. I really wish we can go on and on and on and on. But don't forget, you have me tomorrow morning on RTV TV's breakfast show. And of course, Super ABC and I will be here on Friday evening when we look, take a preview into the game for the weekend. Don't forget, you can always follow us on all of the social media platforms. On Facebook, it is www.facebook.com forward slash my R2 TV. On Instagram, it is at R2 TV. And on Twitter, it is at R2 underscore TV. And of course, download our mobile app. We are entertainment everywhere. We don't want you to miss one minute of our entertainment package. So you know how we do it. Go on all of your place, uh, on all of your stores, your place, Google Play Store, BlackBerry App World, iOS World, and download all of our apps. And then you know what? You have entertainment at your palms. You have entertainment everywhere. And of course, that means you don't get to miss me at all anywhere you are at home, at work, in traffic. Just take it low, take a chill pill, and of course, of course, of course. Look up with us. You know how we do it. Let's keep good scores together. So, my name is Adjiri Salem. I'll be back again tomorrow morning on RG TV Breakfast well, Show. Before you go, let me just cut two shots. Big up to the Chelsea fans. Chelsea won 2 1 against Aston Villa. Can you just imagine that? <laughs> okay, now I'll see you again. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow morning on RG TV Breakfast Show. And of course, on Friday on Keeping Scores, right. the Scoreboard Edition. Thank you. Keep it locked down. It's RG TV.